So although the Lincoln Town Car is a super reliable used car to buy, it does have one particular thing that kind of causes issues for these cars and it's cheap to fix, but if you don't fix it, it will give you a big, big headache. Now, you may have seen posts of people complaining that they have water building up right here behind the passenger seat, all in the floor right here. It'll be damp, it'll be wet, this carpet will be stained, it'll smell like mildew, the whole nine yards. And it's usually because of this thing I'm about to show you and I'm gonna show you how to fix it. And I have the car pulled in like this because I got construction going on outside. And yeah, I was hoping that if I pull it in this way, you guys could hear me better. That construction is very annoying. Don't worry, that is not mine. That is my girlfriend's. I think she's using it for a bachelorette party. So I know it looks questionable, but trust me. So the first thing you're gonna need is this tube of Permatex. It is like a gasket maker sealer thing. I picked this one up with tax for like $13 at my local auto parts store. So look for it. It says it right on there. Gasket maker, blah, 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 ultra black. This is what you need. Now the problem with these cars is underneath this little plastic grate, this little vent, there is a, there's another gasket that covers a hole. And that gasket, depending on the make of your car, the year of your car, could be up to 20 years old. This happened from 1998 to 2011, I believe, this issue. All the Lincoln Town cars in that year frame, that gasket that they put on there from the factory goes bad, water seeps in, it travels down and ends up where I showed you earlier behind that passenger seat. So the first step we're gonna need is to take this off. Now it's two little, I wouldn't call them screws, they're like pins. You see there's one right there and there's also, if I can get a good angle of it, kind of hard to see, but there's the other one right there. There's two of those. So we are gonna go ahead and pop those out first and be careful because they are plastic. And so I got my little screwdriver and I took out this first one, as you can see right there. And this is what it looks like. I guess it is kind of like a screw and it's very long. So get it started, unscrew it, you know, lefty loosey, get her going and use your fingers to just kind of pull it out, but be careful because it's plastic. That's one, let's go get that second one. So this one is a little more difficult to get, but just get it started with that uh, screwdriver and then kind of use your fingers to just lefty loosey it and get it out. And just like that, that is number two. So I will set that to the side so I don't lose it. And now we are gonna begin by taking off this grate. So let me try to do this with one hand. We got a weather strip here that we need to pull off first. So real carefully take this weather strip and just kind of start by peeling it back, peeling it back a little bit, because you're gonna be taking out this grate. So peel that back just enough, kind of right there is fine, because it splits right here. So lift up carefully. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand, so bear with me. Lift up, lift up. Get it out from underneath, and boom. There we have it that little vent cowl. So you got the two plastic screws out, you took the vent cowl out, and now you will see something that looks like this. We got leaves, leaves. We got this bolts going on over here that we, we're gonna take out. And we also got two right here. And you see all that debris in there. That is no good. Gonna get this stuff out and uh, get this baby sealed up the right way. So we got bolts right here, one, two, three, four, five. Those are eight millimeter bolts. So eight millimeter right there. And then you got two more right over here. These are both 11 millimeter. So I got my trusty dusty socket set. I got my eight millimeter, my 11 millimeter. And we are gonna go ahead and now remove those. So let's get it. Okay, so put the eight millimeter on there, get to turning this baby, I already kind of started it. But you see, lefty Lucy, and she's starting to come out. So this is too hard to do with just one hand. 
I'm gonna take all of these out using that eight millimeter and then we'll move on to the 11 millimeter. So these last two in the back are kind of difficult to get to because you don't have as much room. So to add a couple inches, I got a little extender piece here for my socket. And here on the Get This Nick channel, we know that every inch counts. So just a heads up, you might need to use one of those to uh, give yourself a couple more inches to get the job done. You know what I mean? So after that, we got all five of the eight millimeter out and now we are switching over to these two 11 millimeters. I'm gonna take those out and then we'll be able to take this off. So let's get it done. This is a lot harder than it looks, trust me. Just trying to do film and do this. Okay, so we got all the bolts out and I kind of got this started so it's easier for me to show you, but the lip of this whole piece goes under this. So it's gonna be kind of hard because you don't have a lot of room to work with to pull this out, but just know you gotta have this lip clear. So you wanna kind of tug the whole piece this way and down. And then once you clear that, this whole piece will come off. Let me just set that over there real quick. And this is what we're working with here. So we wanna make sure that we take a vacuum and get all of that out clear this all out and put a fresh seal all around here and all around the back side of that so that we don't have any issues so let's get this uh good old handy dandy shop vac and clean all this up and make it look real nice and pretty Okay, so we got that all vacuumed up. I also cleaned all that grime that was kind of around the corners of it. And I didn't do the best job, but you could just use any cleaner and some paper towel to kind of get up any dirt, dust, grime that kind of goes around here because that's where we're gonna be putting that new seal. So clean that up pretty good and leave it alone for now because now we need to go over back to this piece. So this is the second piece we took off. It was sitting in there under that grate like this, remember? Those were the bolts. And if you look, this is the seal in question here. Now, looking at mine, it doesn't look too bad. It's worn down a little bit right there. There's some that are worse that are deteriorated even more. But we are going to take this foam seal that you see right there that follows around. We are going to take that off and clean it up the best we can because we are also going to put that seal around here with this baby that you guys saw earlier. So we're gonna beam it around here, beam it around there, and then we're gonna put everything back together, screw it down, have that seal meet, and it should be good to go. All right, so if you could look here, you see it looks like a basically a piece of tape that's all adhesive, and there was the gasket on top of that. That tape went around that whole piece there and I was actually able to get it started and kind of just peel it all off in one long piece. Now, I had good luck because this car has been mostly garage kept its whole life and it only has 37,000 miles. So my seal was probably in better shape than a lot of these other Lincoln Town cars. Um, you might have a, a more difficult time getting that off. Now, I still have little bits and pieces of adhesive right here that I'm gonna use some goo gone just to kind of scrape it off. So we got this thing all cleaned up. That's been cleaned up, ready to go. Let's go ahead and pop this open and uh, start applying a bead of it all around the edge here. And I'll show you guys when I'm done because I'm gonna need two hands for this. All right, so we got a real thick seal going on there. Gotta be generous with this stuff. Can't be scared to put it on. So we followed kind of the line where the old seal adhesive was. And this doesn't look as pretty, but once we screw it down and everything spreads out, of course there's gonna be some excess that comes out, but we, uh, we should be good to go. So this next part's gonna be hard because I only got me here. So I'm gonna have to basically reverse this now and put this piece back on there and um, screw everything in. So if you've been following along this long, 
This next part is gonna be hard for me to film because I'm doing it by myself. But the video I referenced when I was doing this and trying to dig into how to do it was Anthony from Specialty Motor Cars. So I'm gonna leave that video in the description. Check out that video. It's gonna show you everything on basically all the steps I just did as well as the last step, which is kind of getting this plastic piece back under that lip that we talked about earlier and kind of getting everything buckled down and back to normal. So I'm gonna do my best to show you like before and after, but if you want a more in-depth thing, check out him. But basically we're gonna start by kind of lining up the holes of this piece around these two screws and we're gonna stick the lip under here and then kind of lay every the rest of the piece down like this. But we're gonna start off in this area and kind of use that as a reference to line everything up. And then yeah, so let's get it. Okay, so the hardest part is definitely getting it back underneath that lip. But once you do that and line up those you should have those lined up and you could start making your way around, tightening all five of those back up. You'll see a little bit of that excess stuff coming out the sides, that's good. You'd rather have too much than not enough of this stuff because we don't want any leaks. Moving on, you're also gonna put some of that sealant around these because if you remember, we're putting these back on and there's seals on the bottom of these, so. Let's push down, tighten these babies down. You see, I got this stuff all over my hands. You probably should wear gloves. I had to take mine off and yeah, it's been a mess, but let's get these back on and tighten it down and, and see what we could do here. All right, so if you look after we got them tightened down, see how all that stuff forms around it. It gets smushed out. Nice little sealant and we got all the bolts back in. Now it's time for the final piece. All right, so let's take this plastic cowl now. We'll throw it back in there. Throw the weather stripping on. As well as, I think they're under here, our two screws, those plastic screws that we took out in the very beginning. And she will be all buttoned up and uh, ready to go. All right, so everything lines up as it should. They meet right here, up here, it's flat. Everything is down, the weather stripping is back around. Down, 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 everything is good how it should be. And uh, now we gotta put these screws back in. And just like that, we are all sealed back up. We're back in. And she is, uh, she's good to go. And there she is, back where she belongs, tucked away for the remainder of the day. Mm. So if you have made it this far, <laughs> I hope you at least picked up on something in this video. Like I said, the video I reference is Anthony's from Specialty Motor Cars. I will include a link to that in the description of this video. He had someone filming for him, which obviously makes it a lot easier to show what's going on and him in the process of everything. But I did the best I could, you know. I'm a one-man army here. Get This Nick is a one-man army. So the only two tips I got is use a lot of that sealer. You be very generous with it. You should use that whole tube up if you can. And wear gloves. Because as you can see, I still got stuff. I washed the hell out of my hands and I still got stuff on my hands. So Now me personally, my car, I wasn't experiencing any leaking of any kind. I kind of just did this as some preventative maintenance, I guess you could say. Just so I don't have to worry about it in the future. I didn't know the condition of my uh, seal on there or anything like that. So I didn't want to take any chances. I did it this way to just have peace of mind. And that's Bo going crazy. And I know it may have not have been the best how-to video due to me trying to do it as well as film by myself. But I hope you guys were at least able to follow along pretty well up until the point where you actually got to put that cowl back on. But if you want a better glance at that, like I said, go check out Anthony's video. But that's it. That's all I got for you guys. This dog's going crazy. I got to go eat this steak. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace!